Hey, what's up, fellas? Got another product development video here. I'm just bringing you guys along for the journey of me solving the issue of some of the explosive ignition properties that could be induced by an unexperienced operator. So I had to intentionally blow this thing up a couple of times to learn how to do it so I could teach people how not to do it. So at the end of the day, I did, was not going to accept this as is. So we came up with a new ignition setup similar to that that's already being used on most waste oil burners and stuff like that and the only reason why I started off with the spark plug ignition is because when I ran the banjo burners that's running this autoclave on just propane the spark plugs work fine but for diesel they cause an explosive scenario so let's see what we got going on here so right here we have a propane banjo burner we're running this on propane and I've done a lot of propane testing with these burners and the spark plug setup is one of the best ignition configurations there are. Never had any problems with this setup. In some of the preliminary testing we can see here that the spark plug did just fine. We've got one here mounted in the sidewall of the combustor because the diesel combustion alone wasn't working out too well and I wanted to use propane. So here is another banjo burner being tested on propane and as you can see the spark plug is perfect for the ignition of this thing. We don't have any problems, we don't have any explosions, no danger whatsoever. The reason I'm using the banjo burner for the autoclave is because the massive amount of power that you can get out of one of these things. This little test here kind of shows how much propane we're actually burning in this very small space. All I'm doing in this video is throttling the air control. I'm not touching the fuel at all. The fuel flow is remaining constant. This is just to kind of show how much energy we're packing into a small area here and that is why I use this particular burner for the autoclave. But when it comes to testing it on liquid fuels, some things that I wasn't expecting happen. Here's a quick clip of it boiling a trash can of water. As you can see the whole thing glows red hot and it gives you that same effect you get from the red hot coals in a campfire. You know how the coals are hotter than the fire itself? That is where a lot of the power from this burner is coming from. The thermal heat capacity of air is very yeah. limited, but the IR infrared radiation coming off of that plate is huge. However, as you can see here, running this thing on diesel fuel ain't going to work. Which Okay, just to relax, we're going to do a couple of propane explosions first to get us in the mood here. Notice I said we got to do a couple of explosions to relax. So we got to get in the mood for some frightening experiences here. This stuff is terrifying. It's uh, pretty scary going to light something up you know might blow up on you. Um, I put a secondary plate on top of this thing as a secondary combustion chamber, hoping that it would help burn that fuel a little bit better before it was exited out the combustion chamber and it does work but as you can see we're getting some explosions here so during the first little bit of testing I started to wonder is this thing going to be safe enough to even have an inexperienced operator use so we did figure out goes. how to get the thing to run without making copious amounts of smoke after it heats up and you get the air ratio right that is the thing does quite well it runs phenomenal so we solved that problem, but now we still have the ignition problem at hand. I ended up welding this plate onto the top. As you can see here, there's a, a weld bead all the way around it. It has now become part of the combustion system because it does a great job of acting as a secondary combustion chamber for that liquid fuel. However, we're still stuck with the ignition dilemma. This thing won't light without propane augmentation. So to get the thing lit up, we got to start with propane, and that's um, that's just kind of a hassle expense-wise, and for the operator as well. So, as you can see, it's just not a whole lot of fun. It gets a lot more exciting, as you've seen in the beginning of the video. There, we had a total levy explosion that lifted a 300-pound object off the ground about two inches. So, that was pretty exciting stuff. Here it is running. We figured out how to get this thing running smoke-free, 
and we actually got some serious steam cranking out of this thing with no insulation whatsoever. It's kind of cold outside right now, and as you can see, the entire boiler is naked. You would never want to run this thing like this, and yet we're just blasting down the river here. Look at the steam coming out of this thing. Phenomenal production, and we don't even have any blankets on this thing yet or a shroud. So here it is. We're running on liquid fuel. Phenomenal. We got some really uh, hot temperatures there. Here it is with a little bit of a steam jacket around the bottom. Or not a steam jacket, I'm sorry. A little bit of a heat jacket around the bottom. And I also have a blanket on the top. So the steam superheater is getting us up to 330 degrees, and that's zero PSI. We are not pressurizing this, this steam. People always tell you in order to get a certain temperature, your boiler has to get to a particular pressure. And pressurized boilers kill people every year. I don't like them. I'm not going to build them. This is how I'm going to roll right here. So how do we solve the explosion problem on ignition? This was my solution. This is a standard ignition system for a liquid combustion burner. And I thought, why not just do what they do on that? I was kind of throwing a loop there on the previous testing with the propane working so well with just a spark plug. But a spark plug ain't going to cut it with this liquid fuel operation, and I don't want to be using any propane. So I had to do this naked test to be sure that the electrodes were not in the fuel stream path, which would cause a lot of reliability issues down the line. We want this thing to be reliable. I don't want it clogging up and splattering fuel all over the place. So I think we're set up where we need to be here. This is what we got. So we're going to go ahead and uh, see if we can't blow ourselves up here again. We're going for an explosion-free ignition. I want a novice to be able to safely walk up to this thing and not wearing a welding helmet like this guy here. And as you can see, we had no explosion. The color of that smoke tells me that we're safe. That is not a levy explosion color of smoke. It's not white enough. It's partially combusted. It's due to the lack of oxygen. This thing's gonna work out great. We shut it back down because we're doing ignition testing here. You can hear the igniter lit there. I just wanna test igniting it several times and I did that and at no point did I get an explosion. The thing seems to fire right up just fine. So I think we're gonna be okay. We get a little bit of uh, choke smoke there from not having enough air input, but um, I was a little afraid to turn the blower up once it got lit. I want the surfaces inside to heat up a little bit because a hot burner is far more forgiving during adjustments than a cold one. A cold burner can flame out on you, and that is when you get a levy condition. I'm not trying to blow anything up here today, so. We're just going for an explosion-free ignition, and I think we've got this figured out, guys. We don't even have to use propane, or as Ice Cube would say, we didn't even have to use our AK. It's a good day. Not that I'm an Ice Cube fan, but I grew up back then, so. He did have more amps, though. All right, so once again, and up here we are. No explosions, no We're fired up. And no I think this is going to work out, and, so um, and then a levy I'm just glad that I solved the explosion situation. That was a little bit frightening. Definitely did not want to have to deal with any of that. We're fired up. We're going to be red hot here in a little bit. I don't want to do any significant adjusting. We're at 250 psi of fuel pressure, and the reason I'm going at the elevated pressure is for the advanced atomization. You get a far better atomized uh, fuel spray. Um, you know, just for comparison, jet engines use like uh, 500 PSI's. Here we are at 169 Celsius, 170 Celsius, that's pretty hot. That's right around 100 and, or 330 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're not fully heated up all the way yet, but uh, well, actually, I take that back. We're probably about as hot as we're going to get down there. This thing's putting out some seriously hot steam. And the cool thing about this rig is you can run a zero-pressure steam system. You don't have to worry about blowing the boiler up. 
I am going to put a pressure relief on this thing nonetheless in case calcium deposits clog it up down the line. I don't think we're going to have to worry about that though. So here we are at Fahrenheit for you, uh, you poor suckers in America like me. Probably got to pay taxes just to sit here and watch this. So you can feed people who refuse to go to work but want to tear up the country. And there's a nice little steam blast we got going. I'll probably lose my channel for saying that. <laughs> Damn it, Orwell. Our test here. So, I think we're good to go, man. We got a really nice steam the blast. The level's fine. It's still a rolling boil. Oh, that's hot. So there you go guys, I can sleep easy on this one. We solved two extremely frightening problems. First of all, the damn thing wouldn't burn liquid fuel to begin with. Then once we solved that problem, it turned into a cannon and wanted to explode if you did, you know, a couple of particular things. Not every time, but I, I wasn't willing to send it out like that. So this is what we got.